Okay, so we're actually on a different day because yesterday I had a little accident and I couldn't continue filming. By the time I could continue filming, it was already pretty dark, so I just decided to do the same thing today. Could we get a bookcase store? I'd love to see your collection. Yes, there will be a separate video of these uh, interesting books of mine, uh, which most of them are romance, but yes, you will definitely get um, a bookcase store. Love interest that don't say fictional characters. That's gonna be difficult because all of my love interests are fictional characters. Like at this point, there's nothing in the real life for me. What do you do when you don't feel confident about posting certain content? How do you deal with it? I mean, this happens. Like, I will post something and will be like, this was not good. Like, I should have worked on this more or I'm not happy with it. It happened with Little Wicked Game, like the new story I posted, because I was still under the impression of Stop That Hacker and like the previous, like, just working on those two parts. And I was st still so connected to the characters that I just didn't feel like whatever I was writing in a Little Wicked Game like I was doing my, my best. I just tried to talk myself out of telling myself that it wasn't good enough. So I just went like, you know what? I feel like I did put in 100% in this and I, I got up every day and I still wrote the story and I'm pretty sure that I, I did my best and it's gonna be as good as the previous story. And you know, even if it's not good, I will do better with the next one. I didn't wanna just be like, well, this sucks. I'm gonna delete it. Like, no, I already put it out there so I'm gonna work on it until the end and then if it's not good enough then I will do better. And I don't remove my old stories either because I want you to see that writers do improve. Like you have to study for it, you have to work on yourself, your craft, your talent, you have to hone it. So when you work on it, you get better. How are you? Oh, I'm good, thank you. First book you've read and actually enjoyed. I have a few of this. Uh, so one of them is Dr. Ofboli, which I think you would translate it as Dr. Ouch. I know it's silly, but it's a, it's a, uh, so like it's meant for children and I, I read it first when I was in middle school and then there was one book called 35th of May, fantasy book, loved it, it was the first comedy book I read, I think, yeah, it was the first comedy book I read. And then the last one would be 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea from Jill Verne. So that was the first time I developed a crush on, uh, on a fictional character. I think Captain Nemo was like the first subtle crush that I wasn't aware there was a crush at that point. Favorite book. And I can't, I can't really say there's a favorite book because I've read so many books and there are so many books that I love. So this is kind of difficult. I, I guess if I have to pick one, and this, this is only because like, I want to answer this question. If I have to pick one, it would be Deception by Amanda Quick because Amanda Quick was one of the first writers that got me into romance and then um, that book kind of... I can reread it any, any day, any year, any week, any month. Did you get inspiration from real people to write Kai and, Re <laughs> and Rehan? Uh, I love them, by the way. Thank you. Yes, they're based on real people. Of course, there's fantasy involved here, like imagination, and I developed them to be characters like from a story so do you want me to tell who it is okay i'll tell you who it is so it's very interesting like all the siblings are based on me my sister and my two cousins who were we were very close growing up we're, we're still close and oh like we were such tight crew that um because i grew up with that kind of like mischief and everything i kind of had this like similar um like, I knew I wanted to involve that dynamic with the characters. Do you have any pets? Yes, yes, I have three pets. I have a cat named Choco, a dog named Zina, she's a Malinois, and I have a parrot, a, a budgie, called Polly. Okay, moving on. Now I'm going on what pet. How does Russo manage her life? How does she schedule her things? Russo is the character of my used to read Little Wicked Game. She schedules her time by actually doing psychological evaluation on her teachers. So she tries to like get a sense of their rhythm, like when, when is the time they would usually like teach a new lesson or when they would like question students, like give them a paper exam or something. So based on that, she kind of um, tries to accommodate her schedule if she should study for that subject on that particular day or not. So she cuts down on like time on that. <laughs> oh my god seriously okay listen to this question when are you planning to get married is this my mom's hidden account <laughs> like what um 
I don't know. Hey, I need to fall in love first, I guess, date a bit and then get married. Hopefully this year. That's that's how I'm gonna say. Hopefully this year. What exactly is in Rohan's room? I'm curious. <laughs> P.S. You're beautiful inside and out, and I love your writing. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, you will never find out what's in your hands room unless I write a book about it. Nobody will know what's in his room. Like that is a secret I will take to the grave unless I write a book about it. Uh, and yes, I do know what's in the room. I'm just not gonna tell you. Uh, what's the name of the guy on the cover of Stop That Hacker? Wait, <laughs> I don't. I, I don't want to mispronounce his name because I know it, but I don't want to mispronounce it. So give me a second. I'm gonna guess this is Quarantine Hoard. This is the name, I don't want to butcher it. How do you get such awesome ideas for your books? Thank you for calling my ideas awesome. I guess I just want them to be relatable and interesting and funny, but at the same time very real and deep. How do you stick to deadlines you set for yourself to finish a book or a book chapter? This is really good. I used to have a problem with this, but recently I've been taking it very seriously to post and write and post and write. Uh, so just having that in mind, I'm trying to seek it as an end of job and then this is a deadline that I have to finish and I'm trying to push myself to write down everything. That, you know, sometimes you just cannot get the words to stick on a page even if though, though if you really want to. Um, but you know, I would just like put my headphones in, um, play some music, try to get myself concentrated, concentrated and write. It's the same as studying. When you like, when you need to study, you know, like if you look around the room and everything seems interesting, like doing the dishes, everything, everything is just suddenly so much more fun than studying. Oh, I don't want to do that with the writing as well. And that happens often. So I try to really focus, like, get myself in the mood to write and do it. How do you choose a name for characters? Some are very difficult. Some I'm like, what's your name? Like, give me your name. Like, I, I'm just like not, I cannot come up with a name for the character. Um, but some characters just have their name right away. So for Bradbury, I knew it like from the Little Wicked Game. I knew it from the moment that like, the villain is gonna be named Ellis Bradbury. Like I knew it. Like I, I had it. Um, for Rusa as well, Rusa Moore. Like I had that name in my head. I was like, oh, that's her for sure. But the mail was it was very difficult because I, like I had this like ring in my 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 brain like Damian, which is a very common name here. So since the character was Asian, I didn't know if I should just like use an Asian name or it, it was difficult. At the end, I just decided to go with Damian because it just seemed like, I don't know, fitting of a sort. Yeah. I'm still hesitating if that was the right choice for the character, but people seem to love it, so I'm gonna go with that. Francie was easy. Elric was difficult. I didn't have a name for Elric for so long. I knew I was gonna call him Pussy, but I just didn't have his real name in my head. Until I rewatched the uh, the anime Full Metal Alchemist, and then I heard their last name Elric, and I was like, I really have the name. <laughs> so yeah, that was how I came up with the name. Sometimes like it takes me to Google something and find it. Another time I just have it in my head. Go with the gut on that one. How do you create your character's personality, and how do you maintain it throughout the story? I do try to think of them as having their own lives. So I don't write this, but when I create a certain character and sometimes like when I write I just create a new character and I'm like is this character going to be here often? If it's going to be here often I need a backstory for him. So in my head I figure out this whole person's life. Like I have this person like how did they grow up, their parents, their life, like the personality, like I'm trying to think about it, you know, I'm trying to imagine them, the person. So when I when I write the character, when there, there's a phrase coming up for them, and even though they show up, I mean, just once in like three chapters, um, every time they say a sentence, I know how they're going to say it. Like, I know if they're gonna be trying to be funny, I know if they're trying to be mean, you know, just because I kind of know their personality. Like, so I think that's kind of the secret you have to know your character's personality as well. Even though you don't write it inside the book, you need to know their backstory. Now, if you're like new at this and you struggle with it, and there's a ton of like worksheets that you can just like do or like do like an interview with the characters sort of thing. If It also works if you just like try to think about the character a lot. Maybe like uh, try to theme song, try to find a theme song for them and then like see where that takes you. It takes work, it takes work, I'm not gonna lie. It takes work to, to become better at writing and to make your character sound more unique. Uh, sometimes I get lost, sometimes I have to reread the story and I'm like, mm, this doesn't sound like the character, like this, I need to change this. So it, 
it happens for me as well. I just go back and edit it. What do you feel while writing every dialogue, every personality, every challenge and strategy? I really get into character. I really get into character. Like I try to feel the emotion the character is feeling. Like I try to be that character for a day when I'm writing a certain scene or a certain dialogue. Like I just try to imagine because it's more realistic for me to put it on page if I see, like if I try to relive it myself. Um, so that's, I guess, kind of, that's what goes in my head. Like I try to get into the character's head. Why are you so pretty? <laughs> Thank you. How do you get a scene? How to express your characters without them being misunderstood, if you get what I mean. Here's the thing. If you're trying to make your character, like I'm gonna give you an example. If you're trying to make your character sound mean and he is or she is being mean in a particular scene that is almost kind of cruel, of course your readers are gonna be like, well, this is cruel. Like, I don't like what this person is doing. Like, I think this is toxic or whatever, you know? It's up to you as a writer to kind of try to explain that kind of behavior later on to justify it in a way. For example, for me, I don't. Uh, there was a part in this in the second um, in the second part, like find that hacker. There was a scene where Kai just doesn't. Um, he doesn't want to let Remy um, go and do this like house renovation thing, like the project, because he doesn't want to let his girlfriend go. Everybody was like really upset about. It. They were like, "Why are you doing this? You are not supposed to hold her back." That like everybody was so angry about it. Uh, but, and I just didn't care. Like I know. It deep in myself that this is how the character would react. Like this is his crush for six years. He just got together with her. He uh, he's super in love with her and obviously has an attachment to her. And he gets emotional when it comes to her. Like that's he cannot think when it comes to everything else. And he can be as just as he wants, as just as he wants in the rest of his life, in the rest of the the things. But when it comes to her, he just like, cannot think straight and he's gonna be selfish and he's gonna be needy and like it's okay to feel those emotions but and everybody got upset a bit about it like they wanted him to react in this like perfect way like yes go live your dream but that's not in reality it just also doesn't happen especially when you're dealing with this sort of person like for Elric he was always he was used to it, he was already doing this to Francis so now he was like I have to do this for her like he came from a bit from more mature place let's say but he's also been through a lot of things so he can kind of think more maturely and more objectively unlike Kai he just cannot do that so also there's the the point where you just don't care if your character is, mis is being misunderstood that's just who they are and I think if it's a character well constructed enough, the readers who really pay attention to your story would not care. Like they would be able to understand that. I have two questions. Where are you from? Because I don't know. And when and why you started writing? So I already answered why I started writing and when I started writing. Uh, where am I from? I'm from Macedonia. It's a tiny country. Oh, sorry, let's be political. I'm from North Macedonia. It's a tiny country in Eastern Europe, the Balkans. Uh, you can look it up if you want. There's this one question that I've been skipping since yesterday. It's like, well, have I, I have a personal one. When was your first kiss and how did it happen? So I don't really want to talk about it because like the first kiss, the first time, the first love, they, they are all kind of like very personal. So I'm not going to touch up on that today. Uh, I will say, however, that the story is always a juicy one. This was incredibly fun. Thank you so much for asking me all these questions. They were very fun to answer. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, give it a like. Subscribe, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!